what I'm working on today is polishing a couple of guitars. I finished spraying the lacquer about three weeks ago, so now it's nice and cured, nice and dry, and uh, ready for polishing. The first thing I have to do is flat the lacquer to get a nice uh, even surface. As the lacquer dries, it shrinks into the grain, so you don't get a completely flat surface. So I have to take out any of those little irregularities uh, before I move on to actual polishing. Now, I used to do this using wet and dry paper, which is the traditional way of doing it, but the trouble is you end up getting water on the guitar, and I never really thought that was the right. ideal thing to do. You know, you, you only need the, the slightest little gap, you get a bit of water that runs into the grain down a tuna hole, it swells up and the lacquer cracks, and it's, it's all sorts of problems. And I never really liked it, the idea of slopping water all over the guitar. So, um, I don't do that anymore. I use this stuff, which is uh, um, MicroStar paper, which uh, can be used dry, comes in discs. They might do sheets, they, but uh, I've never found them. So it comes in discs, which I can use on my, my sander, uh, or it can be cut up into any little size pieces you like. I cut it up into various size pieces. You can shape it for doing little areas around here. And with, with that, and a, and a range of little blocks, little curved blocks, little that flat angle blocks, I can get in absolutely anywhere. It doesn't clog, it lasts really reasonably well, and uh, there's absolutely no risk of, of getting water anywhere you don't want it, which is basically anywhere near a guitar, really. So uh, that's what I use. So um, I'll make a start on this one. Well, I've already made a start on this one, but I'll carry on with this one. I start with uh, 800 grit paper, uh, then I go to 1200, and then from there it's, it's onto the polishing mocks, which I'll show you in a little while. So let's get this done and we'll crack on. to do to check my work as I go is uh, is just hold it up to the light if you, if you do that you can see the little any little discrepancies any little shiny spots much more easily simply having it on the bench particularly with a color like this it's very very difficult to see you have to get the light catching just right uh, other colors like like translucent red is much easier uh, for some reason but, but a color like this is, is more difficult so I like to keep checking my work as I go so I don't get any any bits that I've missed so you can see there's a little bit there now that I've finished flatting the lacquer with the 800 and the 1200 I'm now ready to start polishing, but before I get too far with that, I like to unmask the board just in case I have any little problems around the edge, I get a chance to deal with those. I don't usually, but I'll do that first. So first thing is rather than just pull the tape off and risk ripping all the lacquer around the edge, I just like to break the edge of the lacquer first. So I've started doing that along the top of the fingerboard, I've done that. So now I'm going to come around here and do the bottom edge of the fingerboard to that. I use a little sanding block with some 320 or 220 paper on it. And uh, sanding inwards, I just clear the lacquer off until I can see The edge of the masking paper, masking tape. That's it. I can see that. Now let's clean. Otherwise, the the risk is you pull the paper and it pulls the lacquer off, and you get all little bits of lacquer missing. So now to carry on with this, put a little bit of tape there just to 
take the surface of the body. Should I should I slip? Which I'll try not to do. Do that, and then using a narrow edge. It's a little bit of a fiddly job, this. But uh, it's worth doing to, uh, to avoid any little problems. And always sanding inwards, because that way you don't, if you sand it on a push stroke, you can uh, run the risk of pushing a bit of the lacquer off it's quite brittle the lacquer so it's, uh, it's uh, important to be careful bits of lacquer pulled off. There's still a little bit of lacquer on the corner of the board to clean up. But that'll get taken up, care of in a in a while. So that's good. So next step, start polishing. dive in and start polishing. I like to start with the uh, with the sides for no particular reason other than it lets me get a feel for it because I'm not polishing all day every day. It's you know just lets me get a bit of a feel for how it's cutting and uh, lets me get back into the into the groove of it if you like. So uh, I'll start by doing the sides uh, then the trickiest bit is polishing in here because it being a set neck guitar I can't polish the neck and the body separately so you'll notice that uh, things like getting in here are tricky so I do part of that on here and then I finish it off by hand likewise I don't polish the headstock on here so many little sharp corners and the lacquer so thin you, you'll just polish through so I do the, the headstock by hand, but I do, I do the back of the neck and uh, the majority of the body all on here. And then I do finish off all the little fiddly bits by hand. So let's get started with that. camera can see that. You can see the bottom half of there is shiny. And as shiny as it needs to be. And uh, I, I'll do the bottom half of the, of the body here so I'll, I'll go polish this this section because you know what you don't want is that you always want the mop to be coming away from a corner. You don't want to be digging a corner in like that because you'll just polish through so you I have it like that tilted at an angle so I'm constantly polishing off the corner so I do this bottom half of the body then I'll flip the guitar over and using probably mainly the other mop do uh, do the other half then all the sides will be done so I'll keep working around the bottom of here there's a few little bits where you have to be careful around the uh, jack socket hole there there's only a very thin area of lacquer, so you have to be a bit careful. But uh, basically, you have to be careful everywhere. So, 
brutality is not well rewarded in this task. So on we go. Now, finished all the polishing I can do on the wheel, which is most of the guitar, except for a couple of little bits are difficult to get to inside the cutaways, and uh, I also don't uh, polish the headstock on the wheel because there's so many sharp cor corners and everything that it's just too easy to uh, to buff through the, the, the lacquer, which is is pretty thin. So I, I do that uh, by hand and, uh, and these little bits inside here by hand. So there's also, once that's done, the, the final little bits of polished residue left from, from the wheel and everything to give it a final buff up. So I start by doing the, this, this little bit inside the headstock here. And for that I use conventional teacup. Car colour restorer, haze remover, whatever you care to call it, available from you know most regular car places, and uh, with a little cotton cloth, just uh, just do that. I mean, I could I could do the whole guitar with this, but it would be it would be very time consuming. So it's really only. This bit here, from underneath the horn, that's uh, that it's difficult to get to with the wheel. Same process inside here. It doesn't take it doesn't take too much. I've got most of this with the wheel, but uh, you can't get everything perfectly evenly. So no, not, too, not too much pressure, just lightly working at it. And that is that. And also getting right into this corner here at the heel is also a little bit difficult with the wheel. So it's better to do that by, by hand. So good I think probably about there looks good yeah don't need to do any more good right let's clear off the worst of that cutting compound then we move uh, move on to the headstock which is exactly the same process teacup and uh, this is a little bit of a fiddle and the reason I don't do it on the mop is because I have this step design on the headstock. Getting in here with a mop into this internal corner is, is, is impossible so you, you'll never do it and if you try you'll just buff through, the, uh, buff through the polish on these sharp corners so I do all of this by hand. So um, I'll, uh, I'll make a start on that. face of the headstock here is the uh, is the bit which shows the most because obviously it's the it's the front of the guitar and being being black any 
any little marks are, uh, are immediately visible so it's a little bit more of a it's a little bit more of a fiddly process and you also have to be slightly careful not to work too much right on the edges because the, the corners being so sharp the lacquer is very very thin so it's all too easy to uh, to polish through which uh, at this stage in proceedings would be uh, a pain to say the least continue all the way around the headstock do the front face the sides here and the back i've polished up to to about the first fret or just behind the nut really with the with the wheel so i don't need to go any further than that but i just work my way around that with the teacup getting rid of all the scratches and uh, then i move on to the next the next stage i don't know i don't know whether the camera will catch that it's still a little bit smeary but that's the bit that i've been over with the teacup which doesn't at this point it's not very shiny but uh, i've got rid of most of the scratches but uh, when, we, when we've done the final process we'll see just how shiny it becomes now i've been over the headstock and inside the cutaways and everything polishing up all the little bits i haven't done on the wheel so now the guitar's essentially polished i just need to clean off all the polish residue and the haze from the cutting compound and give it its final shine and I use uh, a, uh, a resin car polish and uh, a couple of microfiber cloths one to to put it on and one to to take it off so I'll start where I use the teacup in here and uh, away at that right, and then I don't know whether the camera will pick that little bit up internally there you might just see uh, that's come up to a nice a nice shine mm. and uh, I uh, I carry on with the same process all the way around the guitar and uh, until it's all done, all shiny and uh, ready for assembly. So uh, I'll carry on with that. You'll notice that again the guitar has changed colour. But this is, this is what it looks like when, when, it's, it, when it's finally polished. Uh, super flat, nice and shiny all over. Uh, well worth taking a bit of time. I think to, to get it right. So uh, this one's ready for assembly now. Put some pickups in it and get it going. Good, excellent. There we go. Thank you for watching.